Now, there are just so many sports to squeeze into the Olympic Games that they even get going before the opening ceremony. Today, those first events, football and rugby seven group games getting underway. In the men's sevens, France faced the US this afternoon here. France's men did not take part in the sevens four years ago, although the women were silver medalists. Then later tonight, a French men's football team, coached by Thierry Henry, take on the US in their opening group game in Marseille. So is France ready? Well, joining us now is Dick Hyatt Hatsifatsu. She's a professor of applied Olympic studies and author of the book Discourses of Olympism. Thanks very much for joining us on the program. So what do you think then? Is uh, France ready? There's always a last minute panic or problem, isn't there? Notably around security, perhaps? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, thanks for uh, inviting me again. Well, I would say yes. I think uh, last time we spoke, we said that everything can happen. There is always a little bit of a last minute panic. Now we're only two days away. And I would say that security remains priority for the organizers. Um, uh, there is government and private companies will be using AI tools and other surveillance uh, technologies to make sure that there is uh, security for everybody. And I would say that uh, the, the, it is world's largest security operations outside of work. That, that is how it has been described. There are, of course, a few challenges, I would say, uh, with um, AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, ahead of the 2024 Olympic Games, the French government approved Article 7. That has raised a lot of controversies in terms of uh, issues of human rights, especially. It uh, really triggers uh, human rights challenges, crises, and controversies. Yeah, how is uh, AI actually being used? Yes, well, we can say that the AI has been used uh, in, in different ways. Some have been more controversial than others. Uh, one is about this Article 7, that actually uh, the AI uh, for surveillance of the citizens will remain in effect uh, a few months after, about, uh, I think, about seven months after the Olympics. Uh, so this has created some kind of controversies. However, we also need to see uh, the positives of the AI use. And uh, we should uh, definitely look into the Olympic uh, AI agenda uh, that was launched uh, earlier in the year. And uh, just yesterday, in the 142nd IOC session of uh, the Olympic Committee, they actually discussed the updates. And we can see that over 180 potential cases uh, that they can be used. So this is the very first time that we will see AI to be used uh, to detect any online abuse of athletes, also for analyzing sporting performance, but also for the fairness and accuracy of judging. So this is, this is quite unique and, and fair. So I think there are a lot of great things about the AI, and of course about security, detecting uh, some uh, objects in the crowd, unusual kind of movements. So yes, it's always like a kind of a cost and benefit situation here. There's been so much talk here in Paris uh, about the opening ceremony uh, and so much of it shrouded still in mystery. I mean, we know it's going to be very different on the Seine River, right in the middle of Paris. But who's going to light the flame? Is Celine Dion going to sing? So many questions uh, still remaining unanswered. They've done a pretty good job, haven't they, about keeping, uh, keeping it all under yeah. wraps? It's amazing. I, I can briefly say here that I took part in the London 2012 Olympic uh, Games uh, ceremony as part of one of the dancers, actually. I was part of the volunteers. And when I was there, although I was there every day for the rehearsals, we had no idea what is going to be in the ceremony. So it's the same. The, these secrets are really kept so tightly. But what we know is that the, the ceremony is, going to, is ambitious, is historic, is spectacular. Uh, it, it makes the first opening ceremony where most spectators will not pay an admission fee. Uh, and this is about Games Wide Open slogan. So about 222,000 tickets uh, will be available for free. So this is quite uh, an interesting one. Really, I am personally really looking forward to it. We hope so. We hope so. Lots of changes in the sport as well. I mean, they're notably um, changing some of those uh, d different uh, events to try and make it more attractive to younger people. Yes, we have the, the new sport of breakdancing or often called uh, breaking. 
And um, we can say that this is a, a technique, a strategy of uh, the International Olympic Committee to tackle the aging uh, demographics of Olympic viewers. This is a concern of the Olympic Committee. We can see that 2008, uh, the U.S. Uh, median average age was uh, 47 years old, then in London was 48, then in Rio was 53. So then, we can, and also we can see that between London and Rio, there was a drop of 30 uh, percent of, of viewers between the ages of 18 and 34. So as part of this strategy, the uh, Olympic Committee has launched the Youth Olympic Games, has also launched the Olympic Internet TV channel, and has introduced some action sports and some youth-focused action sports. Uh, we can say that break dancing is not an action sport, but it's definitely a youth-focused sport. And uh, some of the summer events that we have seen recently is windsurfing, mountain biking, bicycle, motocross, and in winter Olympics, snowboarding, ski cross. So breaking is really interesting. Many consider it's a dance. So how is going to be a competitive dance? Uh, and I'm sure that it's going to really bring down the ageing demographics of the Olympics. Yeah, looking forward to seeing the differences. Good to have you with us on the programme today. Thanks very much for Thank joining you. us, Dikai Hatsu, uh, okay. Hatsu, Professor of uh, Applied Olympic Studies and uh, author of uh, the book Discourses of Olympism. Thanks very much.